Welcome to Blog Talk Radio in high fidelity. Broadcasting from Cincinnati, you're listening to the Ringside Reporter Podcast. All the news in the world of boxing right here. Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Now, here's your host, Eric Morda. And we are live. Welcome to the Ringside Reporter Podcast, where we talk about the latest boxing news. If it's related to boxing, we'll talk about it here. My name is Eric Lorta, and I'm here with my co-host, Ringside Robert, and England's adopted son, Joe Habib. We have a great show for you today, and as always, you can catch us on the web at ringsidereporter.com. If you want to call and ask questions, you can call in right now at 323-870-3857. And we will be we will be here till eight thirty tonight. Where it's a hard out at eight thirty because the fights are on PBC, uh, PBC on Fox. Uh, what is it? Fox Sports, right? Fox 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 Sports One, and yeah, you can Fox blame Sports Jason one. for scheduling this because he is Al Heyman, you know. Wow. Okay, but we'll be out of here at the heavyweight. Uh, it's like a heavyweight card, so three fights on there, I think. So it should be pretty good. Yeah. But today it's uh, a heavyweight triple header. So there you go. Today, we're going to talk about Tyson Fury. He's back, and we'll let you know how he did. The IBF strips Triple G of the middleweight title. Robbie, very broken up about it. But first, we could start with Riff. Uh, no, I, I don't believe, you know. He's broken up about it. I told you. See? Listen to him. No, I, 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 no, I, um, we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> you were in tears. You were in tears before the show. We had to console you. Let's not. Let's not sugarcoat this. Uh, no, no, come on. He, he was broken up, man. Baby, he can't. He can barely even talk about it. Uh, he's in tears. It's maybe a kid, okay. maybe a kid Christmas morning. Well, I'll have to get, I'll have that was how we felt. Tomorrow and uh, so find out what's up. Uh, friend of the show, by the way. Jeff yeah. Horn versus Terrence Crawford for Horn's WBO welterweight title. This was on ESPN Plus. Plus. Plus, Terrence Crawford defeats Jeff Horn via knockout in the ninth round. Let me tell you what, at no point was Horn even close in this fight. He was trying. I mean, you could see he was trying, but he just couldn't figure out Terrence Crawford. I had Crawford winning every round until the fight was stopped. Crawford knocked Horn down in the ninth. Uh, Horn got up and then just got followed up by a barrage of punches by Crawford that led Robert Byrd to step in and stop the fight. You know, Horn's corner said that the stoppage was premature, and honestly, I can see that. He didn't look overly hurt to me when the fight was stopped, but you know that being said, there was no point in this fight going on. I mean, there was it was pointless. Uh, Horn was getting beat in every possible way. There was absolutely no way he was going to win this fight. Even if he landed like a big haymaker, he wasn't winning this fight. He was barely competitive, and he he's a good fighter, but he was really he wasn't. I mean, this was just levels, completely different levels. Uh, right now, man. I would make Crawford the favorite over everyone in the welterweight division with the exception of Errol Spence. Beeb, what did you think about Terrence Crawford here? Well, we already knew that he was the better boxer. We already knew that he was the faster guy. We already knew that he had better footwork. And we already knew that um, he was just the all-around better fighter. But the one thing that we had to see, and this is what I said before the fight is, we had to see that dog come out of him because he was going to need it in this fight because he was fighting a guy that is very unorthodox, very awkward, very physical, and has a very mauling type style. And you saw early on when Jeff Horn tried to get inside and muscle Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford wasn't having it. He was the guy that would um, grab Jeff Horn just as, just as well as Jeff Horn was trying to grab him. Jeff Horn would try to come forward, nudge him, um, push him backward, push, uh, shove him a little bit. Terrence Crawford would wrap them up, and he walked them back. And on occasion, he would throw him. He would maneuver him around that ring. So the big thing here was um, I think Jeff Horn underestimated Crawford's strength. And I think a lot of people probably didn't factor that in before the fight. So, you know, Terrence Crawford, as I said before, can do it all. He's, he's a flashy, finesse-type fighter, a guy that has excellent boxing skills. But the most dangerous thing about Terrence Crawford is he can operate very effectively from every area in terms of range in that ring. He can fight up close. He can fight mid-range, and he can fight on the outside. He can do it from the orthodox. He can do it from the southpaw. So um, he's just a, a very tough puzzle to solve. 
And if you add the physical attributes on top of that, where, I, as I said, he's got that mean streak, that dog in him, that killer instinct, and that guy that will go in the trenches when he has to, if it gets physical, he's not going to shy away from that. So that was the big difference in this fight. Jeff Horn had no conceivable advantage in there. And, and then people talked about Jeff Horn being the bigger guy. They looked to me almost to be about the same size, to be quite honest with you. Crawford looked filled out. He looked thick. He looked muscular. He looked physically um, outstanding in this fight. Um, he looked like night and day. You could see at Junior Welterweight, he was much thinner, much flatter, a little drawn out. Um, in this fight, he was he was he used giants. He was significantly bigger than he than he looked at 140. So I think Terrence Crawford um, just had too much all around. And I think once Jeff Horn realized that he couldn't bully and muscle him on the inside and push him back and and, and use his physicality on um, Terrence Crawford, you could see that he was just mentally um, defeated after that. And uh, this was just a, this was just a tough, tough night for Jeff Horn because nothing he could have done was going to save him from the outcome that we that we witnessed that that stoppage, and I'm I'm glad the referee did stop it when he did because you could see Jeff Horn was starting to get busted up, he was starting to have his mouth open, he looked tired, he looked hurt, and um, if that fight went on, uh, he could have he just was going to get um, more damage done to him, and like like I always say, you know, live to fight another day. So I'm glad the referee stopped it. Uh, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, that's the fight I think is is that everyone wants to see now. Um, I'm sure they're going to have a couple fights in between before that fight could ever get made. But, um, yeah, that's that's our errors, um, Hagler-Leonard, without question. I, Bob Barron mentioned that, and I agree with him 110%. What do you – okay, so and that's one thing Bob Barron mentioned. But one thing Bob Barron mentioned, and I thought about you right away, he said, and let me know if you agree with this, that Terrence Crawford is just as good, if not better, than Sugar Ray Leonard. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have I have an opinion on that. Um, I think it's probably a little early to, to, to put him in that class, but it's not outlandish. It's not outlandish at all. When you look at just the eye test and you look at the the you know the raw skill set of both guys. But one thing that you can mention about both men, because again, both guys very flashy boxers, very skilled boxers, very athletic. Very impressive boxing skills, but just as Crawford showed his grit and toughness last night, as as flashy and um, as, as much finesse and as, as, as cutie as a boxer that Sugar Ray Leonard was, he could bite down on the mouthpiece and he could be a killer and he could fight a tough fight when he had to. Go back and look at that Tommy Hearns fight, the first one. When boxing failed Sugar Ray Leonard in that fight, what did he do? He had to make it a dog fight on the inside. He started pushing um, Tommy Hearns and muscling him around on the inside. Started ripping that body, taking them legs away. Started throwing the forearms in the chest. Um, so in that regard, both of these guys, as skilled as they are, when the boxing doesn't work, they can they can go to the, um, the grittiness, the, the dogness, the toughness, and they could fight when they have to fight. And when just like Sugar Ray Leonard, when he when he had somebody hurt, Terrence Crawford is an outstanding finisher. He goes in for the kill. He's not thinking twice before you know uh, about taking your head off when he when he smells blood. Sugar Ray Leonard was the same way. So I do see a lot of similarities between the two guys, to be quite honest. And um, there is a couple more wrinkles to Terrence Crawford's game. That with, with that being, he can switch the southpaw. Um, he moves a little bit more than probably sometimes Sugar Rain Leonard does. Um, but, you know, I, I think overall, I think it's a good comparison. And um, I don't think it's outlandish. I still, still think there's time that we need to see, if, you know, Sugar Rain Leonard won, won uh, uh, titles in five different weight classes. He's been in some mega fights. He's had, had some epic fights over his career. Terrence Crawford hasn't achieved those things yet. He's got three um, – titles in uh, three different weight classes, but he hasn't had that marquee opponent yet. And Ray Leonard had four or five marquee opponents. So um, I'm not saying that Terrence Crawford won't do well when he does have a marquee opponent, but he still has to have that marquee opponent so we can um, make a fair assessment in terms of resumes with Sugar Ray Leonard and him. But eye test-wise, absolutely. I could see that eye test-wise that they're very comparable in terms of skills. 
Notorious VC in the chat says that beating Jeff Horn doesn't really tell us a lot of doesn't really tell us much to be honest about Terrence Crawford. I got to be honest, man. I, I I disagree with that. And Jeff Horn, I mean, it's not like he sucks. He's a he's a good fighter. Uh, he's you know he's not Terrence Crawford. He's not Errol Spence. You know, but I think he can make. I mean, I think he can beat some guys in the division. I think he's a top quality fighter. He's not a bum. Well. Let let me let me say this. Jeff Horn wasn't going to win this fight last night, but the big concern going in is, could Jeff Horn make this fight ugly? Could he make it sloppy? Because you throw Jeff Horn in there with just about anyone else, and um, he's going to get win, lose, or draw. He's going to give you a tough fight. But Terence Crawford, from start to finish, won every second of every round in this fight and dominated. As soon as the first bell rang, rung, excuse me. So Jeff Horn, I think, in there with anyone else, is going to make them work, and he's going to turn it into a sloppy, ugly fight. Terrence Crawford is so good that he did not allow Jeff Horn to do that. So I give Terrence Crawford credit because he schooled Jeff Horn from start to finish, and he actually started bullying and out physicality, out and he, and he out muscled, I should say, and out. Up, um, you know, out physicality, if that's even a word, um, Jeff Horn. So, you know, you got to give him credit for that. His first fight in the division, fighting a big, strong welterweight, may not have been the best or ho- most highly skilled fighter out there, but at the end of the day, um, he has a style that is, is very tough to deal with. And, you know, he could make any fight look ugly. And, and again, we have to give Terrence Carr proper credit for not allowing that to happen yeah uh what were your thoughts on the size difference everybody talked about coming in that terrence crawford was going to be so much small jeff horn was huge even bob arum alluded to this jeff where do you see the size difference between jeff horn and terrence crawford i gotta be honest there was no size difference to no, me. no i didn't see it like i said earlier yeah, yeah. Earlier i thought in my breakdown i i don't think that um there was a significant uh, size advantage at all no, not at all. I mean, he looked just as big as as Horn, if not, you know, I don't know if he was bigger than Horn, but they both definitely looked the same size. I mean, there was no, uh, I didn't notice anything like that. So also too, uh, we had a Twitter question from Dwayne on Twitter. Do you guys think Crawford should leave top rank if they continue to put his fights on the ESPN app? He's um, hard to promote. Uh, America missed a great fight. This can't be good for the sport in the long run. I I think this whole app idea absolutely sucks. All these fight, uh, uh, I don't care how much money uh, ESPN is giving top rank, but these fights are supposed to be on our TVs, not on our telephones. I think this whole thing sucks. This fight, regardless of how it turned out, this fight should have been on our TV last night. Well, like like I said earlier um, when we were talking, Eric, this, when you put fighters on an app, you're not going to showcase them to the to the, the widest audience possible, as Ravi just mentioned. You can't build a star by putting him on an app. Anthony Joshua is not going to be fighting on the zone. He's going to be on Sky Box Office Pay Per View. The end game for every fighter that wants to be a superstar is pay-per-view. Um, pay-per-view, whether you love it or hate it, I actually look forward to that those that one or two pay-per-views a year because it's like boxing Super Bowl. It's something to look forward to. Um, you get goosebumps, the adrenaline flows. It's 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 a special occasion. It's like a boxing holiday for most people. That's how I look at it, anyways. It's my opinion. Um, so if you're gonna sit there and showcase a guy on an app with a lim- with limited um, visibility, there's no way he can get to that light at the end of the tunnel, which is pay per view. Everybody wants that Floyd Mayweather blueprint, that Anthony Joshua blueprint, that Canelo Alvarez blueprint. That's where you want to be. The, the the biggest earners in the sport have all been pay per view stars. Um, no one's gonna be a, a a superstar fighting on ESPN Plus. With all due respect and fighting on the zone. This app is great for mid-level guys, guys who are kind of decent fighters, but they're not upper elite, upper echelon elite types type fighters. 
But to put Terrence Crawford on this app and showcase him on this app, you're not going to build him to be a pay-per-view star. And this is why, again, I want to talk, make a point that we talked about earlier as well, Eric. This is why Showtime's killing everybody. And I, and, and I don't care what anyone says. This is why Showtime's killing everyone. Because they're hitting all, they're hitting all the bases. They have, a live net, they have live fights on their network. They have streaming services on their app and on their YouTube channel. And they have pay-per-view. Whereas HBO does not have a streaming service. They have live fights and they have pay-per-view. ESPN has live fights and they have an app, but they don't do pay-per-view. So to maximize a superstar fighter's earning potential, he's got to fight on pay-per-view. There's no questions asked about that. Conor McGregor does not make $100 million fighting um, on an app, fighting on just a basic network. So the end game, as I said, is pay-per-view. And I don't know how you can build to that end game and work up to that end game by showcasing a superstar fighter like Terrence Crawford, who I believe is the best fighter in the sport right now all around. I'm not a pound for pound guy, but I think all around skill set wise, um, this guy is the, is, 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 the, is the most highly skilled fighter in the game. And, and the reason why I put him over Lomachenko is, again, that dog factor, that grittiness. Because in the back of my mind, I'm still asking the question, what happens if Vasil Lomachenko is in another fight like he was with Orlando Salido. What if someone else brings that ruggedness, that awkwardness, and even that dirty style? And he he fell and wilted under that pressure, and he had no answers for that. Whereas Terrence Crawford, you try that stuff on him, he was throwing Jeff Horn. He actually threw Jeff Horn on the on, on the um, canvas yesterday. He was pushing him back. He had his forearm underneath his neck. He was grabbing him and, and throwing him or uh, throwing him into corners. He wasn't, yeah, he, he wasn't going to deal with any of that shit. The Sulemanchenko doesn't have that punching power, that killer instinct, and he doesn't have that raw dog grittiness that Terrence Crawford has. And that's why I think Terrence Crawford is a better fighter than the Sulemanchenko, because I still don't know what's going to happen if someone roughs the Sulemanchenko up again and makes a sloppy, ugly fight. We already know he's got that dynamic boxing ability, the flashiness, the hand speed, the foot speed, the balance, but he doesn't have the greatest punch of power, and he doesn't have that raw dog killer instinct, mean streak dog in him, that Rottweiler um, terrier, that pit bull terrier that Terrence Crawford has, and that's the difference. There you go. All right. Beep, it's time. Well, she's not here, so I'm going to have to do it. No, sorry. Yeah, uh, can but we I've been, later? But, but I've been practicing. I've been practicing it. Oh, this is terrible. here. It goes. Chaka 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 chaka. That was the best one ever. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. Jesus. That was horrible. That was absolutely horrendous. I would let, I would rather listen to puppies drowning than to listen to that again. <laughs> That was awful. Hey, Eric, where's Elena? Can she do it? That was terrible. <laughs> terrible. Train wreck of the week this week, Terrence Crawford, ironically enough, for refusing to talk with the Australian media. Crawford and his team stated that they won't be talking to any Australian media for the fight because they didn't want their words twisted. And we wonder why Crawford's not a bigger star. You know, the bottom line is everybody was talking about this last week where he's not being promoted. They're putting him on the app and blah, blah, blah. The bottom line is not Aram's fault. It's Crawford's fault. This isn't the first time he's refused to talk to media. I've already did the same thing in his hometown. You know, this is his yes. fault. He doesn't talk. He has no personality. None. You got to start selling yourself, my man. You have to talk to people. You even, no, he, even if he, people he, think you're a jerk. According to him, he, he according to him, he'd like to put the reporters in the ring because he doesn't want to deal with them at all. <laughs> That's it. I mean, well, you know what? That's the thing, though. It's like you think about it and you think about what he's, you know, like Deontay Wilder. You know, some people think he's a blowhard. Some people think he's a great guy. Some people think this or that. But they tune in to hear what he has to say. It doesn't matter what people, whether people love you. doesn't matter if they hate you. Just get them to watch you. Talk to the Australian media. Let them twist your words around. Who cares? 
You know what I mean? Maybe then you'll be marketable. But right now, he's just not marketable. He's not. You know? can, I, can I just interrupt real quick? And I, and, I, and I love Andre. I love Andre Ward. Yes. I love him to death. I love him to death. He's my he's my he's probably my favorite fighter right, right now in this in this modern era. I, I love the guy. But he, he made a statement. And I didn't I didn't agree with it. I respectfully disagree with what he said. Um, he was critical of a reporter that asked Terrence Crawford, what do you need to do to be a big star or whatever? And he said, well, you know, you guys are the media. You guys should promote these fighters. You guys should write about these fighters. And to some degree, we do do that. People who do write articles about fighters, they are promoting them. But at the end of the day, it's not our job to take a fighter, put, a, put, it, put him on our back, and, and promote that guy. We're not pro – people who are writers, not, not me. I'm not, I'm not a writer anymore. I used to be a writer. But people who are writers, people who do YouTube channels, yeah, we talk about them, and that is promotion for them. I, 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 Without question, but we're not we're not the the, the people scheduling the um, PR appearances for these guys. We're not the people who are scheduling the interviews for these guys. We're not the people who are working in the promotion. We, we don't have a vested interest directly with with a specific fighter or or a writer or for that matter or or an analyst or whatever. So it's really not the press's job to promote the fighter. The fighters should have. An ability to learn how to promote himself. Um, the the promotional team gives him that avenue and gives him that vehicle, that conduit to promote themselves. So they got to get in that car and they got to drive that car. You can't have the car and just sit there and not turn the key, start it up, and put your foot on the gas pedal. You can't just sit there and do that, and you can't expect the press to do you any favors because again, the press is is, is gonna criticize you when you do wrong and they're going to praise you when you're right everyone is it falls under that same scrutiny and when a fighter gets mad because um someone in the press is critical of them um and they don't want to talk to them but that, they have to understand that comes with the territory now i can see if someone's blatantly trying to sabotage somebody there's a blatant bias against somebody but at the end of the day um, we're not supposed to be hanging out with these guys. Our press isn't supposed to be hanging out with these guys, going through McDonald's drive through with these guys, riding on their jets, going to their parties. And, um, you know, they can do that. But at the end of the day, they're going to lose credibility amongst their peers because you cannot be objective in, in, in how you cover that fighter if you get too close to them. So at the end of the day, it's not the press's job to promote you. It's not the press's job to be your friend. It's good that you have good relationships with fighters. It's good to be friendly with fighters. It's good to be able to call them up and have a, you know, a, a really friendly, amicable conversation with them. But at the end of the day, um, it's not good for you or the fighter because it's going to make it look like you're biased towards that fighter. And it's also going to make it, you know, make, put you in a situation where when once you start writing something bad about that fighter, then, then obviously the relationship's going to stop. It's better to just be in the middle of the road with, when it comes to that. Yeah, I mean, is he really that thin-skinned that he can't take some criticism? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, 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 you know, Andre, yes, Andre yes. Wood thinks it's the press's job to be his promoter. So why? You know, so yeah. if the press is going to be his promoter, then they then they should get the same amount of money that Top Rank is getting. They should get a cut of that. Then, yeah. Right. Why would someone willingly promote somebody if they're not if they have a vested interest in? Listen, I mean, there's nothing you know Aram can really do with that. I mean. Put him on ESPN, put him on ESPN Plus. Doesn't really matter where you put him. He's been on HBO. He's been, you know, he's been showcased. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares about him. Outside of our little circle, nobody cares about him. It just is. I, I, I care about him, but I don't matter. Well, you matter to us. So there you go. Jose Pedraza versus Antonio Moran. This was on the undercard. Uh, 10 rounds lightweights. Uh, Pedraza won a unanimous decision, 96 to 94 on all cards. Jose Benavides versus Frank Rojas. Benavides knocked him out in the very first round. Uh, and Shakur Stevenson stopped Ayilo Mesquia in the second round. Now, let's go to the big card here. Showtime. Leo Santa Cruz versus Abner Morris for Santa Cruz's WBA Super Featherweight Championship. Honestly, this fight was a lot like the first one. Uh, it was a war. Santa Cruz wins a unanimous decision by the scores of 117-111, 115-113, 116-112.
this was a good fight. It was just like the first one, uh, but it was the same fight we saw, you know? Uh, I thought Santa Cruz was a pretty clear winner, just like their first fight. This was a good, entertaining fight, but not sure it really did anything for either fighter, honestly. I think there were better fight yep. options for both of them out there. Uh, Robert, what did you think of uh, this this fight? Um, I, I already saw this three years ago. It was an it was an instant replay, um, and I'm glad the right guy won because now he gets to fight Gary Russell, and that's going to be a more entertaining fight. We finally get to see Gary Russell in against somebody minus Woman Chinko, of course. But we finally get to see Gary Russell actually face some stiff competition. And he can't use his hands as an excuse. He can't use a long layoff as an excuse. You've got to get that fight signed. Uh, the right guy won here, and I'm looking forward to, to uh, Gary Russell and Leo Santa Cruz because I think, I think that's going to be a very competitive fight, and we're going to find out. Uh, frankly, we're going to find out what Gary Russell's made of. I already know what Leo's capable of, but um, we're going to find out what kind of fighter Gary Russell really is, in my opinion. That's a good fight. That's a real good fight, and I hope it comes off. B, what were your thoughts on this fight? Here's the problem with this matchup. Um, are the fights entertaining? Yeah. Are they good fights? Yeah. But these guys are going to fight 10 times, and Abner Myers is going to lose probably 9 out of the 10 times. Because here's the thing. Leo Santa Cruz is just a bigger, stronger, better version of Abner Myers. They're very similar, but Leo Santa Cruz is just bigger, better, and stronger. And, and, and um, because of that, it doesn't matter how similar their styles are, how good both guys are. You know, they have pretty, pretty identical styles, but at the end of the day, Santa Cruz is just better. He's just bigger, stronger, and better, and he's longer. And he just – there's there's, there's no way that, that Morris could really win unless he catches him with a, you know, with a, with a, with a punch that he's not ready for, like a shocking one-punch surprise knockout. But that's not just – it's not going to happen. So I, I don't think uh, that this fight really, really mattered, really made sense. Um it wasn't like the first fight was a close fight at all, in my opinion. Um, it, it seems like there's a token judge in, in every fight now that's going to throw a 114-114 one, a scorecard in there or a 115-113 scorecard, regardless of how the fight went. Um, this this was an eight. This was a 117-111, um, uh, a uh, maybe 116-112 if you wanted to be a little generous. There's no way this was a 115-113 fight. And just like the first one, one judge added a draw. Um, so because you because they have one of those close scorecards in there, does that justify a rematch? Um, you know, the other two scorecards that were 117, 111, that was an accurate description of the fight. And that was an accurate description of the first fight. So just because you have a 114, 114 scorecard and 115, 113 scorecard in, 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 in uh, the first fight and then in the second fight, that doesn't justify a rematch, in my opinion. So... Um, just because both guys have exciting styles, um, Leo Santa Cruz is just better. And I think we already found that out in the first fight, and we weren't going to learn anything different in this rematch. So that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, I would agree. I think that, uh, I, I, like I said, man, I want to see these guys fight different people. There was nobody clamoring for this rematch to begin with, and it's not no, like no, it no. was a good fight. It was a good fight. It was a good fight. It was entertaining. and. But again, there was just better options for both. It just did nothing for either. Fight. But you knew who was going to win. You already right. knew who was going to win, and you left the you know you, the lasting impression that you were left with was, as you said, bring on Gary Russell from Santa Cruz. Yeah, you know. I he mean, should. that's it. You know, I mean, that's that's really all that's left it because. He, and he should have been fighting Gary Russell this time. He shouldn't have been fighting Abner Morris. I was yeah. about to say that. He yeah. brought in Gary Russell last night. Yeah, exactly. That 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 should the have been Gary, fight the Gary Russell fight is more intriguing because there's more questions that can be answered. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's yeah. a that's a crazy fight too. Santa Cruz and uh, Gary Russell. That's a good good yeah. fight if that oh, happens. That's an excellent, Sounds that's like an outstanding fight, one, man. Yeah. I, I want that before I want that before the year's over, guys. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, man. 
Uh, so let's talk about the undercard here. Uh, Jamal Charlo or Jamel, Jamel Charlo, excuse me, versus Austin Trout for Charlo's WBC junior middleweight title. Uh, Charlo wins a majority decision over Austin Trout by the scores of 118, 108, 115, 111, and 113, 113. How they going to draw with two knockouts in this fight? I got no idea, man. <laughs> I don't wow. know. He was getting paid. I don't know. Two knockdowns and they end up with a draw. How in the world can you do, can you do that? My so God. Well, now, now they're going to have a rematch. <laughs> well, so no. what was the? It was one fifteen uh, one eleven. No. Uh, no, it was one fifteen one eleven. If you counted the if you counted the not if you didn't count the knockdowns, it would have been one fifteen one eleven. They had it for uh, Trout. If you didn't count those knockdowns in, because those were two yeah. tennis. How about yeah. that? And, and the one, and the one, and the one judge who had it a draw scored seven consecutive rounds for Trout. What yeah. kind of fight was he watching? No idea. Now, well, one fifteen. Austin, Austin Trout has had a wonderful career, but seriously, he clearly yeah. lost that fight. Yeah, I, I would go along. Yeah. Honestly, uh, Jamel Charlo could have been the train wreck of the week for his walkout outfit. Uh, he looked like the cowardly lion from the Wizard oh, of yeah. Oz. Uh, it was bad. But uh, as far as the fight goes, the fight was all Charlo. Austin Trout definitely had his moments and was able to land shots, but Charlo just came forward, put a lot of pressure on uh, Trout. Uh, Charlo knocked him down twice, as we we noted. But, you know, honestly, there were really flash knockdowns, and that first knockdown was really based on a slip. I mean, he hit him. I don't even think that was a knockdown the first one because it looked like he, he slipped already. And then I was going to ask you about that, yeah, because he did slip. It didn't even look like a knockdown. And he, he hit him on the way down. You know what I mean? So well, yeah. it didn't even, it, he hit he hit him, and then afterwards he he was like he was moving backward, and like a second or two later, that's when he slipped and fell. So he, so he already had he was he was touched, and then he was moving backward, and as he moved backward, he tangled his legs, and then he fell. So the referee thought that maybe it was a delayed reaction from the punch, but it wasn't a delayed reaction from the punch. It was because he twisted his legs and tangled them up, and he and he lost balance and he fell. So whether a punch was whether that first punch was thrown or not, possibly that first punch caused him to, 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 to want to move backward as a defensive move. But regardless, he was going to fall no, no matter what. Yeah. Because he was just, his legs were, 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 were yeah, tangled this, together. This is a case where instant replay and boxing would come in handy because the referee could look at the monitor and go, oh, that's not a knockdown. You know. That's true. That's very true. Uh, you know, for me overall, I was really impressed with Charlo. Uh, he went 12 hard rounds. He looked really good, especially against a veteran fighter like that. And this is kind of like, I think this is what Charlo needs. Charlo needs to get in there with, with fighters that are going to give him some rounds, you know, where he's not going to take him out right away, where they're, you know, somebody where there's going to go the distance with him, give him a rough fight, give him different looks and that kind of thing. Uh, so I thought it was a good win. I thought it was a really good win for Charlo. Uh, after the fight, he called out Jared Hurd. And uh, I don't know I who can't wait. that fight, man, but I can't wait to see it. I've heard different stories like uh, Jared Hurd may be looking at Kel Brook for a fight next or something like that, But in which is, I like the fight too. But, I mean, if that happens, it happens. But uh, yeah. No, I, I can't wait. Jared Hurd and Charlo, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. B, what are your thoughts about that fight, Jared Hurd and uh, Charlo? I, I, I'm really high on Jared Hurd, man. I, I just think this guy is, uh, um, like I said, he reminds me of Antonio Margarito, but with more polish. Um, he hits harder. more. He's uh, physically stronger, I think. Um, he just looks like a, um, an upgraded version of Antonio Margarito. And I think his size and his strength and his just physical conditioning and his power, um, he's not the prettiest guy in the world when it comes to boxing ability, but he just wears guys down. And um, that um, Jamel Chalo I saw last night, who was coming forward and was being very aggressive, um, I, I think that, you know, favors um, Jared Hurd's style a little bit. That that plays right into his strengths. And um, I, I just think that uh, Jared Hurd's going to beat Jamel Chalo. But it still would be interesting. I'm not saying it would be easy, but I no, think he would beat uh, Jamel. I think he would beat Jamel Charlo. I, I think Jared Hurd wins that fight. I, 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 I can't. Think he mentally breaks him down. I think going. he mentally breaks him down. Because I, because I will tell you this, uh, Charlo was winning the was winning the fight clearly yesterday, but he looked frustrated, and you could see he was fighting off of emotion. 
It's almost as if he was trying too hard to get the knock knock out. And um, because of that, uh, I think he um, reached in and lunged in and, and opened himself up to counter shots. And I think Trout uh, took advantage of that. The problem with Trout is, is he just never plants his feet and, and, and really holds a strong stance. He never he he can make you miss and, and he'll make you pay a little bit, but he just doesn't have that that presence that 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 um, presence of there, that appearance of strength in there. He always looks like um, he's throwing those get off me type punches. They may be scoring blows, but they're not they're not punches to hurt you. They're punches just to touch you. And um, that's the problem with Austin Trout. Um, he seems like he's kind of frail, like gets pushed back a lot, and, and he looks frail sometimes. He looks like um, guys are, are muscling him and moving moving him backward, and he just doesn't hold his ground and plant his feet. And, and he makes you miss, he makes you pay, but he doesn't make you pay enough. You know what I'm saying? He makes you pay a little bit, but he's not he's not hitting you and, and hurting you and stopping you in your tracks. He's not getting you know making you think twice about going back at him after getting hit with a counter shot. And that's always been the problem with him. There you go. Uh, my, my question would be, should Austin be continuing or is it time for him to find something else to do? Cause I don't, I don't see him ever winning a top level fight anymore. No, he's done. He's done. I think that, uh, I mean, listen, can he beat some guys? Yeah. He can beat some top 10 guys. He's Austin trout. Of course he can. Why, why continue to fight though? There's nothing left to prove. You know what I mean? The guys are a little bit younger, a little bit faster. Um, I just don't think he has anything else to prove. Well, he's not going to get better. He's just going to get. He's going to continue to decline. Right. So, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's the other point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because well, because he openly said last night, "I'm not done. I'm going to keep fighting," and I don't yeah. know if that's a good idea. Well, they oh, always do it after the fight, which is a horrible idea. You know, is this well, it for you? Gotta, we, it's a horrible. We idea. gotta understand. We gotta understand something. These guys are born with a with with, with a special mindset, a special gene. Right. That they're just fighters, and for them to just walk away and not and just that have that fighting spirit just just disappear overnight on them, it's hard. Even Andre Ward retired; and he's still talking about wanting to like. You can tell, you can tell when he's being interviewed; he's kind of like, it, you know, he misses it. You can tell. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Reese Mack in the chat uh, says, "Any info on uh, how well or badly did the ESPN Plus app sell?" Uh, we don't know. We, we don't know. And I don't know that we're going to get any uh, info on that as far as like ratings wise, what, what that fight did on the ratings. Babe, let me ask you, cause you have the app. Um, can you watch different things on there? Like at, tw you know, like at uh, last night, where is it just a channel? So like last night we had, uh, you know, the, the live fight on there. Were there other live sports to watch on there at the same time? You know, I didn't check. I didn't check. I think that you can. Okay. I think that you can. All right. Very good. I can, res I can research that for you. I can't say um, without question that's a yes. Because if that's the that. case, they could, they could actually tell us how many people watched the fight. You know what I mean? Well, that's another thing I was going to say. Is there any way of tracking, tracking the views on this app? Because it's not like regular television where you have the Nielsen ratings. How how do you how do you judge how do you um, assess the, uh, the the view count on this app? Right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And I'm wondering if uh, if if we'll we'll know those numbers and if they'll release those numbers. That I don't know. No. <laughs> no. I just don't see. I don't see how they can figure that out. Yeah. How can you track how many people? You have to track how many people have the app downloaded and how many how many of them are watching. Like that's another thing too. How do you measure a fighter's success by fighting on this app? How do you gauge it? How do you gauge what fights what fights a success, what fights not a success? Yeah, you're certainly not going to get popular. I, like I'm, gl I'm glad I didn't do it. I so not. I'm on the app right now, Eric. Uh -huh. And the only live event they have right now is uh, the Bandits versus Spirit. Okay. It's ESPN National Pro Fast Pitch. So I'm thinking that's a, a soft, some type of softball, I'm guessing. Wow. Well, that's uh, that's wonderful. Uh, Worth its weight in gold, right there. That's that's worth your five yeah, so. right there, four ninety nine. But the but the beautiful no, thing, no, like no, I told no, you, no. The beautiful thing about this app, like I told you, is they have this bottom here where it says on demand, and it has best of boxing on there. And you yeah. pop that open, 
You could see Ali. You could see Sugar Ray Robinson fights, as in Charles. Um, you could see uh, Rocky Marciano, Sugar Ray Leonard. So they have they have a library of like 80 fights with all old legends. Like I was watching Sugar Ray Robinson versus Joey Maxim this morning. So that in itself, that's that's I don't know. Is that worth you if you pay the um, 49.99? Up front, you save ten bucks a year, so it, and it works out to be like four dollars a month, four dollars and sixteen cents a month. Is that worth it? I don't know, because then you have those thirty thirties too. Those that's that's a good show on ESPN. So I'm starting to really look at this and think about do I want to get this? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm considering it. I'm, 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 I still don't like the fact they're putting like you know mark like marquee elite fighters on there and try to showcase them on there. But I do like some of the archive stuff that they have on there. I will, I will say that. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Beeb, I see Brianna there. Is she willing to do the train wreck of the week? Yeah, we'll Just let her do the train that, wreck. Like, we'll out of my head. train wreck for us? That Go terrible. Chugga, 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 chugga. Choo-choo. Oh, that was much better. That was good. That was like Thank angels you. singing. Thank that you. was like angels singing as compared to Beeb. That was well, we we got to record yeah. that for when she's not around. It's terrible, Beeb. That was terrible. They don't like when I do it. They sound. They say it sounds like a cat drowning when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about across the pond here. Tyson Fury, the fight a lot of people have been waiting for. Tyson Fury versus Safir Safiri. Uh, Tyson Fury returns by stopping Sefer Safiri after the fourth round. Safiri did not come out of the corner in the fifth. This fight was all Tyson Fury, and Safiri didn't even look like he wanted to engage in any action at all. This was a good comeback fight for Fury, but honestly, I want to see him fight a breathing opponent next. Uh, I knew the fight was gonna was you know was gonna go this way at the weigh in. So Fury looked intimidated intimidated at the weigh in, and if you saw the weigh in, you know what I'm talking about. Tyson Fury at the weigh in was trying to show off the size difference between the two. I mean, there was there was quite a size difference. He's a tall guy, so Tyson Fury actually picked up Safiri as if he were carrying a bride across the threshold. <laughs> the more disturbing part of this whole thing is that Safiri was happy to let him. At that point, I lost a lot of respect for Safiri, and I knew he was going to get murked in there. And and sure enough, he did. Uh, <laughs> Beeb, Tyson Fury is your guy. You were responsible for him. What did you think of his performance here? Um, I don't want to be negative here because I'm glad to see that he's back. And the reason why I'm glad to see he's back because, as he said, boxing gives him a purpose. So if he wasn't boxing, he'd probably be doing something he shouldn't be doing. And my biggest concern was we've seen fighters take long layoffs before. Um, and everyone has their vices. Maybe, maybe some guys have issues with drugs. Maybe some guys have issues with alcohol. Maybe some guys have you know, mental issues. Maybe some guys um, have eating disorders. A lot of fighters have eating disorders because they're constantly starving themselves to make weight, and then they go on binges. This guy's got every single issue. Every every issue I mentioned, he has. And he um, basically took every single one of those things I just mentioned and took it to the maximum level he could in, you know, in his layoff. And um, he abused his body to a level that few people – do okay and he had to come back from that and that's a long journey and he's still not there yet can he make it all the way back i don't know i mean the guy's got some psychological issues you can just tell by the way he um he talks in interviews that um he's a little bit uh guarded he's a little bit um unstable uh he's entertaining i love him but this was a sideshow this was a this was a farce um, and I hate to say that because, you know, this is something that, you know, Fury needs. It's his livelihood. I understand that. But at the end of the day, when you're picking a guy up at a weigh-in and cradling him like a baby, you're kissing somebody during the, you know, after the referee gives, gives the fighters instructions, and you're basically playing around in there, and you're not even really fighting with a purpose. And you got an opponent in there that's offering up nothing, and you're just sitting there laying back throwing your hands up in the air like it's like it's some type of uh, WWE spectacle. I don't think it does you any favors. You know, 
it's funny because the crowd was cheering him on, a few boos here and there, but the crowd for the most part was cheering him on. They were eating it up alive. If he ever did that in the United States, in a, in a, in a, in Vegas or New York, he would have got booed out of the booed out of the arena. So um, hopefully, moving forward, um, you know they, they get a better opponent, and it does. It's not as much as a sideshow as it was yesterday. But at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you, uh, he looked slow. He looked. Um, his timing was off. Uh, he didn't look like he was putting a lot of. He was, he's putting his body behind his punches. His, he just looked off. Maybe that was because partially because of the weight. Maybe it was partially because of the layoff. But I am still, again, very skeptical that he can ever regain that form he had when he was fighting Vladimir Klitschko weighing at 247 pounds. Okay, because he was still about 30, roughly 30 pounds above that yesterday. And physically, he looked horrible. Yeah, he didn't look good. He didn't. And, um, look and again, he looked like he's throwing those right hands. He looked horrible. The jab was okay in spots. Um, his timing was off. I, I, he was trying to like throw some, some uh, load up with some shots, and he missed miserably. He landed like one uppercut, and then Safiri decided he wasn't going to continue. I, I don't know, man. I would I would investigate Safiri. I, I would maybe consider holding up his purse because again, I, I wasn't in there taking the shots, but I think that was like the only uh, meaningful, significant punch that was landed in that fight. And if that was enough to make you not want to continue, uh, I have to question whether or not you were there just for the payday. Well, obviously, you were there just for the payday, but you you, you got to cover that up a little bit. You, you got to at least play along that you want to try and win the fight, whereas this guy was in there with no intention of trying to win this fight. Yeah, not not not. It was, very, it was clearly evident of that. You know, clearly evident of, of that was if that was the case. What um, would you have done if your Safiri and Tyson Fury went to pick you up the way in? I would push him off me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't allow it. We'd not have a fight, him, man. We, we would fall right. Gonna, well, we'd I don't know if right I would probably. Right. I don't know if I would square off with Tyson Fury, but I'd probably probably have to pick a chair up or something. I don't know if I can go one on one with him, but if he tried to pick <laughs> me up, but I would push him off me. Yeah, I mean, he over there. I would, pull, I would, pull, I would pull away. I wouldn't like jump in his arms like I was like, like a kitten and wanting to be cradled. It's just what he was. It was like a bride carrying him across the threshold. That's exactly how Robbie would have done, but that's what I would have done. I would have pulled away. You said Robbie would have jumped in his arms. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, Robbie yeah. likes oh, Robbie boy. likes to be cuddled now and then. I heard. Why are you? <laughs> What's wrong with you, Beeb? He's that's a very cool. affectionate person. Cold as a fish. All right. Question from Rob Palmer, the guy who does our rankings. Where do we rank Tyson Fury after the win? Nowhere. No way. He's not. You can't him. rank him anywhere. You can't rank him after that fight. You can't rank him. You you whatever you he was before be the fight. A real opponent. Yeah, whatever he was. And let me. The fight, and let me. After the fight. Let me ask you this, Eric. How long does a lineal status last? Is there a statute of limitations on a lineal status on a champion emeritus? Um. Because, it doesn't uh, seem to be. No, I think it's when you retire. I, I really do. Because, I mean, but, but that Tyson Fury we saw yesterday, does that guy look like the lineal champion? I mean, in terms of uh, just, uh, you know, you know, for all intents and purposes, yeah, he is the lineal champion, okay? Technically, if you're yeah. following you yeah, know, he's the lineal chronological champion. order. No. That he never did lose the fight in the ring. Never lost. But, and that's true. But does that really matter now when you look at what was in that who was in that ring yesterday? Yes. Could there's that that guy wouldn't last one round with either Joshua or Wilder. And again, look <laughs> at guys like Floyd, look at guys with Floyd Mayweather take two years off, two and a half years off. Sugar Ray Leonard took three years off. Um, you know. Andre Ward had long layoffs before. Mike Garcia, long layoffs, a year, year and a half, two years. Well, they come back. They're retired. They, yeah, they they're, come back. If they come back, they, they're no longer lineal. No, I understand. But when they come back, they look a lot better than that. They don't let themselves go to that to that level. So in in theory, yes, he's the lineal champion. But he didn't look anything close to a champion last night in terms of form no and you got a, you, that guy ballooned up to about 350 400 that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying how much significance can we really put in that because 
when, they, when, when, when you have a guy who's a lineal champion, for whatever reason, he walks away from the sport or he gets stripped or whatever, um, does, does that mean every, everything else stops in that division? No, guys have passed guys have passed him, and in a lot of cases, guys will pass the lineal. Like Canelo Alvarez was the lineal champion at, at middleweight. So being the lineal champion, how important is that? I think a lot of people – Put too much stock in that. It's not in my opinion. important. It's, I don't think it's very important at all because you know yeah. some people do. Some yeah. people do. I don't think it was very important at all to be honest with you. I mean, because like you said, I mean, look at Canelo. He's a 160 pound lineal champion. You know, who was fighting at 155. So no. Yeah. All I think it's other, basically go ahead. It all comes down to who the guy is that has that title. Yeah, I would go along with that. On the undercard uh, of Tyson Fury, uh, Terry Flanagan versus Maurice Hooker. Maurice Hooker scores the upset over Turbo Terry Flanagan by split decision. Scores were 115, 113, 117, 111 for Hooker and 117, 111 for Flanagan. Uh, even though both fighters were unbeaten, I, th I thought for sure Flanagan was going to win this fight, man. Congrats to Maurice Hooker. What a fight. Awesome fight. Uh, Fox Sports, Diego De La Hoya versus Jose Salgado. So this fight was supposed to take place about six months ago. Uh, this was the fight where De La Hoya came in four pounds over. He did it again uh, as he came in a half a pound over, but this time he was able to lose the weight, and the fight went off his plan. Uh, De La Hoya dominated Salgado in this fight. Uh, De La Hoya wins by TKO as Salgado's corner stopped the fight at the end of the seventh. A big thank you to our guy Rocco Lucente, uh, who was there live and gave us a full report of the action. Thank you, Rocco. Uh, and also, too, he had a great breakdown of this fight. Go check it out on our website, uh, ringsidereporter.com. And, of course, uh, tonight, the fights on Fox Sports 1 start at 8.30, and we'll be out of here at 8.30 so you guys can all check out the action. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to the upcoming fights here. And let's see what we got on the docket here, June 10th. We got Earl Spence. <laughs> we do. We do. All right, so tonight Earl, at 8.30. Earl. Uh, tonight at 8.30 on Fox Sports 1, Travis Kaufman versus Scott, Alexa Scott Alexander, 10 rounds heavyweights. Uh, Gerald Washington versus Wes Nofire, uh, 10 rounds heavyweights. And Michael Hunter versus Iago Kiladze, uh 10 rounds heavyweights. And uh, Ahmed Ab El Biali uh, versus the dreaded TBA, they're light heavyweights. There you go. All right, June 14th. Is that, uh, what is that, Robert? That's Thursday? That's a Thursday. Right. Thursday. Uh, from Indio, California, on ESPN, Mercito Gesta versus Robert Tito Manzar Manzanares. Ten rounds lightweight, it's easy for me to say. And Edgar Valerio versus Manny Robles III, ten rounds featherweights. June 15th, from London. Uh, you can probably catch us on Box Nation or stream it or uh, YouTube it later. Joe Joyce versus Richard Lart Larty, 12 rounds for Joyce's Commonwealth heavyweight title. And Michael Page versus Michael Siach, uh, four rounds light heavyweights. I don't know if that's uh, Joe Joyce. Is that an Eddie Hearn guy? No, no. He's uh, actually a ring star guy. David Hay. David Hay. This is Michael Venom Page then, I think. Uh, Michael Venom Page of uh, Bellator fame uh, is going to face uh, Michael, Michael Siach or Siak maybe, uh, four rounds in their light heavyweight. So Michael Venom Page, if you guys follow MMA, you'll know who he is. June 16th from Frisco, Texas, on Showtime, Errol Spence Jr. versus Carlos Ocampo, 12 rounds for Spence's IBF welterweight title, and Danny Roman versus Moises Flores, 12 rounds for Roman's, Roman's WBA junior featherweight title. Javier Fortuna also on the undercard versus Adrian Granados should be a good fight. On BN Sports that same day on Saturday, Jose Zapata versus Carlos Diaz, 12 rounds for the WBA lightweight eliminator. And Pedro, Little Pete Duran versus Daniel Luego, eight rounds lightweights. It's been a while since uh, I've seen Duran fight, so that'll be good. On integrated sports pay per view from Puerto Rico, uh, Angel, uh, Angel Acosta versus Carlos Buritrago, 12 rounds for Acosta's WBO Junior Flyweight title. And I think that may be it. Still looking. That is it. All right. So let's talk yep. about the Errol Spence. Uh, let's talk about the Errol Spence fight here for a minute. What, uh, 
you know, I haven't seen Carlos Ocampo. I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen him. It's in Texas, which is uh, Errol Spence's hometown in Frisco, Texas, right by his hometown. If it's not his hometown, Robert, does he have a chance? Does Ocampo have a chance to pull an upset here? Um, well, yeah, what they're, what, they're actually holding this in the brand new Dallas Cowboys practice facility. Really? And they got 14,000 seats already set up and all the tickets are sold. Um, I don't know anything about Ocampo. I've never seen him fight. The only one that I know of that's seen him fight that calls in here regularly is Nacho. And he said, Nacho, uh, he said that Ocampo is a good up and coming fighter, but uh, if you remember Nacho's past call, he said uh, he's not ready for this level of competition. So I, I just wonder what kind of fight we're going to see. And this is, this is by the by the way, speaking of IBF mandatory, this is an IBF mandatory. So yeah. this is how you fulfill your mandatory, even though even though uh, if you think the person is not ready for it, at least he's taking care of business, and this will allow him to fight bigger names afterwards well well robbie to be fair though he that's the only belt he has so if he gets stripped he's not going to have any more titles which in whereas in a lot that, of that, cases, that, that is that is correct yeah. i know that yeah you know. so but b have you seen ocampo fight have you no, I, no. I, I don't know anything no, about him i'm gonna look though i'm gonna do some research have they sold fourteen thousand tickets uh, that's what they said on Showtime yesterday. All 14,000 tickets are sold out. That's great. Wow. Good for, okay. good for Spence. Yeah. I hope they really push Spence and they and they really you know promote him well because he deserves it. He's a, he's a tough young – he's a good kid. Seems like it seems like a real nice guy. He seems like a guy that you can get he's behind. That doesn't ask for, he, he's a guy that doesn't ask for a whole lot, but he's been asking for a hometown fight. So this, yeah, this yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like Spence. I just like the way he carries himself. I like the way he, you know. Seems like he's a hard, hard worker in there. He's always in shape, um, I, and I, he comes to fight every fight. So. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and go to the phones here. Five zero eight. Five zero eight. You're live. From this day, you'll be my new fool. Hey, what's happening, people? Georgie, what's going on with you guys? What's happening? What's happening, Georgie? Hey, Georgie. What's going on with this weekend? We train quality for quantity. Hi, ho, Georgie. I wasn't impressed. Huh? I said, hi, ho, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was nothing out there that really, like, make me remember any fight from the past like i don't know the, the amount of resources that these people spend and not really a good fight i mean you guys no. were impressed by any other fights no. well no i mean I, you know who? you're right it was a it was definitely a quality uh quantity over quality fight uh the the best fight of the weekend in my opinion was the uh morris uh santa cruz fight santa cruz yeah. Can, yeah, I, can I tell you? Can I tell you what was Eric? Can I tell you what I think was the what? Maurice Hooker versus Terry Flanagan? That was yeah, I didn't get to see that, but yeah, it sounded like a really good fight. Yeah, that was a good fight. It seemed I don't know, man. For me, just like I watched them, but just like nothing memorable. I just like I don't know, man. I could have, I could have used more. I could have used. I could have a better use of my time doing something else than wasting time watching those bullshit. The Tyson, the Tyson Fury shit. Oh my god! What the fuck was that? Yeah, that was bad. Did you did you watch the Craw did you watch the Crawford fight, uh, Georgie? Yeah, I saw the mismatch, and, and I mean, like I said, bro, not impressed. Crawford, people talking about Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Leoner. After his best of position is what? Little Gamboa, when he took the last two belts to become undisputed at 140, he took it from that Undango dude, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we seen Undango outclass, outclass by, by, by these other dudes that upcomer. That I bet you not even 50% of the fucking pet 
or the boxing fans even know this dude was. So you start seeing the fucking theater and the one that make believe. And you know what I'm saying? It's just like, he's number one in the world. He's, okay, he's number one in the world. Fighting this type of opposition. I mean, as you see, we see the skill. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. We seen the skill. But from there to have crawl for like up there without competition, nah, that don't roll with my book. You know? I mean, it was ridiculous, brother. Didn't like it at all. I just waited for fucking Crawford to face somebody that really can challenge him. Don't worry, he I, will. I don't think so. I think Bob's going to give him the fucking, what you want to call it? Benavides. The Benavides. No, 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 he's going to give him the, the Bradley oh, treatment. He's, 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 yeah, well... Uh, um, you know how Bradley fucking went without fighting DSG at 140? And Bradley just did the fucking recycle fight with fucking Pac and stuff? That's yeah. gonna, that's going to be fucking Crawford legacy. I bet you so. No big names. Don't fucking do we fucking don't know. I don't see him fighting nobody from PBC. And I mean like ever. Like that bad. Like fucking ever. I don't see that happening. I guess he is going to pass by and we're going to see if I'm right or wrong. But until he don't fight somebody really that makes sense for me, I just don't, I don't want to, that's ridiculous talking about Sugar Ray and pound for pound and all that bullshit. What you got, fucking little Gamboa on your record? That's what you got. And you the illest. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, you know what, I mean, that's kind of my now. thing. Is he, his, his resume isn't, great it's not really pat you know no it's, it, not. it's not he doesn't have the best resume out there i'm not saying he doesn't pass the eye test i'm not saying he's not a good fighter i'm just saying that you know his resume is a little thin i mean he does have like i said three world titles but hey so does adrian Bronner, and i wouldn't put his resume up against anybody <laughs> you know what i mean right. so yeah, yeah it's tough I, to say. I would like to touch about about the situation with this ad with bob that we cannot really go into the numbers brother that's really fucked up if we cannot determine, like Beef said, that he got the fucking app and then he already canceled. How many people you think did the same shit? I bet you 90% a lot. Of fucking a lot. Yeah, probably a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot of I'm glad I didn't he do it. He lost money. He, I called you that. You think I'm going to pay for that thing? Georgie. That Georgie. was a qualify on that app that would have made anybody sign out. And after it passed, what they got to offer now on that app? Well, can I say one thing? Do it. Do it. Here's, here's another big problem with that app. And I think you just hit the nail right on the head. They don't have a fight schedule. So I don't know when the, when, when the next fight is going to be on that app. So I'm just supposed to buy that and 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 wait around for the next fight? What if, it, that, what if they don't have a fight on for another two or three months? So my, my whole thing is I don't is want I, to fight on that app. I want it on my TV. My, my whole thing is this. I'll just buy it for a month whenever they have a fight on that I like. That I that I that I want to see it live. Yeah, that that's I my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is your I mean, Big Mark Industries Mark. could write that off anyways at the end of the year. Weird turns. <laughs> Boxing is taking this really really weird turns with this app situation and, and, and just I don't know man it's just it's yeah you've got you've, this ball when they're doing that you you've got Bob, no you've got Bob, you've got Bob Arum doing this and you got Eddie Hearn doing the, the zone crap I mean we're Americans we want fights on our TV people oh the xenophobia is kicking this through the situation Robbie Robbie this is the situation as the as the world turns and technology improves, TV is doomed. TV, as we know it, that the people, everybody go watch the fucking box and get brainwashed with the bullshit. That's done. Everybody getting their news from the internet. Nobody believe no fucking CNA and Fox, MSNBC, all that fucking CIA shit. Nobody give a fuck about none of that. People just watch what they want to watch, and they do it online. So yeah, the future is to transfer boxing online, but not through these app shit. 
these people have to go with the YouTube TV. A big, huge platform like, like YouTube that most people really watch, that will make sense. Can I ask a but question, when they though? To, you know, Can I, let me ask a question. What would, what, what's the difference between the watching YouTube and watching it on an app? Because YouTube, you don't have to sign up for shit like that. You have to put no money. Most people not necessarily. Really not necessarily. You can be on YouTube Red. Look at YouTube Red. That's all paid oh. content. I'm on a YouTube Red trial right now. You know, you know why? I'm watching Karate Kid. I'm watching Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, baby. Kai rules, baby. Yeah. Cobra Kai. Yeah. Sweep the leg. And Go I'll ahead. probably buy it again. Like I'm going to buy that Cobra Kai shit, too. I'm going to buy it. I've already seen the whole fucking, you know, I'm waiting for the second season. But what I'm saying is, I would not find out about that Cobra Kai on YouTube Red. Without you too, right or wrong. That's right. Cobra Kai rules, son. That that's worth so, the YouTube I mean, website right there. These people are gonna help, gonna have to come boxing promoters and and the so-called advisors and fucking Al Hamans of the world. They're gonna have to come and kiss the YouTube ring. That's the bottom line. Wow. To transition from TV. Because there will be a transition, maybe not on my life. Well, it could be on my lifetime. I give it like 20, 30 years stop before it's like a full transition. But Georgie, do you have I'm YouTube not Red? I'm not going nowhere. Georgie, do you have YouTube Red? Fuck no. Did you buy it? Did you get the free month? Did you do the, the free trial so you can watch Cobra Kai? No. I've been coding all these niggas. I stream everything. I am paying all that shit. I'm paying $300 on the fucking cable bill. Between the internet and the box and the this and the that, I ain't spending no more money on none of that. It's a cap. That's it. So when shit start coming out of TV, the things that I want to watch, then we start dropping the channels. Well, pretty much that's my call. I don't have too much to say. Kind of disappointed about the quality of the fights. Hopefully, something on the horizon. Oh, wow. let me talk about. Let me talk about her, because a lot of people talking about her side not gonna be there against Charlo, and they talking about like her gets hit a lot. Though her got the chin to take that Charlo punch. Well, he seems to be having a really good, solid chin. So what do you guys think about that? I think it's a good fight. I don't know, I don't know who I lead to in that fight. That's a good well, fight. Man. I think Lara is better than better than Jamal Charlo, in my, in my opinion. So I know we don't like to do combat math, but that's a, that's a very difficult style to deal with. It hurt pretty much deciphered that style. So I think if he can do that, then he can handle Jamel Jolly. That's just how I see it. Austin Trout can go 12 rounds. I think, I think we're going to see her era. I think this is her era. It's just going to no, It's going to take a little bit of time because they pushed Lara a lot. And when and, and her was about to get robbed, he would have fucking knock him down on the 12 round. Oh, Showtime was about to rob that motherfucker so quick. But then God, he fucking knocked him down and he got the victory. Because they knew he wasn't about to fight him again. Because that's what these people like to do. They fucking recycle, defend. I don't want to see Maris no more. I don't want to see Trout no more. Trout is the type of person that I would love him to, love, to, to marry like my mom or my sister or my niece. Be a part of my family member. Because he's a good dude. But as a boxer, we cannot be recycling these fucking names no more. Why? Because cause this is what happened. Fucking Crawford took the two belts at 140 for the Inungu dude. Then this other up and come and fight and come in our class in Nungu. So mm -hmm. that takes all the credibility from the fucking Unification 140 stuff. You know what I'm saying? They recycle these people so much. And keep the real competition down. And when the real competition comes along, everybody's like, oh, but what happened? What happened that we got fooled? That's what happened. Anyways, I got to go. Everybody up there, 
to pull the channel if you could come up. I'm out. Thank you, yep. you so Georgie. much, Georgie. And thank you to Notorious VC in the chat who just uh, made a donation. He wants to see Daniel versus Johnny on ESPN+. Plus. And you know what? I do, too. Who wins in a rematch, B, Daniel or Johnny? <laughs> I'm going to say Johnny. He looks a little bit more in shape than Daniel does. Yeah, Johnny. And I thought, you know, and if we're fair about it, I thought Johnny dominated the first fight. I thought he really did. Okay. <laughs> I thought he dominated. Plus, that crane kick doesn't work like the second time around either. That's all uh, he got. It's only a surprise. It's a one-time thing. He proved that in Okinawa in the second movie. That crane yeah. kick doesn't work. Not against somebody who knows what they're doing. That yep. crane kick doesn't work. Right. That's old school, that crane kick. That's all. That's right. Johnny's Johnny's evolved. You now see, we have the, the choke. Yeah, now, we have the, now we have the beep kick. He's come full circle. He's come full circle. All right. B, where are the best callers from? Ohio, baby. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> 614, you're live. What's up, guys? What's hey, happening? What's happening? Yeah. Here. Uh, look, man, what a night. Uh, what a weekend for Boston, man. Uh, great show. Uh, some of y'all know, uh, B broke down, uh, some of the fights, man. And, uh, uh, what I was about to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Georgie just threw me off, man. I was listening to Georgie and, uh, he just threw me off. It seemed like he was a little upset about Crawford fans comparing him to whoever they want to compare him to. And, uh, Crawford, right now, that's all he has, really, is his fans to help promote his ass because a lot of people had trouble this weekend with that damn ESPN app. Well, yeah. it was one of the most ridiculous ideas that anybody ever came up with. It, 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 I, it, it, had, I went over a friend's house to try to yeah. get him to watch the fight. His stuff was messing up. He ordered it. He actually bought, bought it for the seven-day trial thing. It was yeah. messing up on him, so I had to yeah. go to my house and I actually found out that Box Nation was having it, uh, was hosting it. So I actually got the fire stick. So I had to watch it through there, which was good. So I was like, oh, sweet. So I got Box Nation. So I clicked and watched it through there. But it was a lot of people I've seen online talking about they was having trouble with this ESPN app. But uh, as far as uh, Crawford being promoted like that in this fight, that was it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Uh, but Crawford did what he was supposed to do. I didn't think Crawford was going to do that, so I was impressed. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm I was impressed with what he did against Jeff Horn because for once, for one 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 thing, he been criticized for fighting the smaller guy. I used to hear this, and I got tired of hearing that because I thought Tom Delorme, Victor Posto, those were bigger guys. Absolutely. His boxing IQ was superb. And Dongo was a huge and guy. People was coming up with it. Excuse me. I said Julius Andongo was a huge guy. Yeah, Much you hit, you hit, yeah, you're you're 100 right with that. That's another That's one. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, That's another one. It was just like yeah. it was like more and more excuses. So here is Crawford moving up in weight. Not only did he move up in weight to fight the bigger guy, but he bullied the guy. He bullied Jeff, mm -hmm. like shoving him around, purposely doing it. That was yeah. the statement that he came. That's what you call making a statement. When you yep. come to the weight class like that and you push Jeff Horn back, Manny Pacquiao couldn't do that. Manny couldn't do it. So it obviously it shows you Terrence got some strength. And people is gonna start it shouldn't start doubting if he's strong or not in this weight uh, weight class. Cause I thought Horn was gonna go the distance. Now some people predicted Horn would just get whitewashed and just get, you know, stopped. But I thought Horn was tough enough to make it through the fight. I thought he was gonna do it. I didn't predict that. But Terrence Crawford impressed me with that. Uh, but I thought he did oh, real good. But as far as some uh, so Georgie talking about his resume and all this other stuff, man, Terrence Crawford is a pound for pound, a pound for pound, in my opinion, is the best. Julian Dongo beat, who was it, uh, Troy Avisky? I forgot his name, from Russia. Uh, oh, Troy Avisky, yeah, Troy Avisky. Yeah. For TBE, yeah. For Troy TBE. Nosky, yeah. yeah. He owed, well, it was for the WBA title, am I right? Yeah, right. knocked yeah. him out cold. Knocked yeah. him out cold. Right. Yeah. And knocked, knocked him out cold. Now, people don't remember, uh, Crawford was trying to get that fight before Ndongo. Yeah. So, he didn't want to fight uh, Terrence Crawford. They turned that fight down. 
So he was trying to keep that belt hostage. So I, I, it was good that Ndongo knocked him out because he didn't even want part of a conquer. It's not it's not easy to be undisputed. These fighters ain't really trying to make these fights. It's not easy. So for Crawford to make that happen and, and become undisputed and move up, he got to be respected, man. He's one of the best right now. And I right now, I don't want that fight with him and Spence. Everybody's talking about him and Spence. And it seems like you're going to have to make a choice because I like both of them. But I got to go with Crawford. I'm rolling with Crawford. But we're going to have to make a choice when them two guys meet because it's two boogeymen in the welterweight division now. And that's just simple. There are two boogeymen in that welterweight division. And I would love to see an undisputed fight. Not them fighting with two belts or one. Clean out the division and just leave it with two. Because I think those two guys are just the best right now in that welterweight division. Uh, the Tyson Fury. I don't know about y'all, but I didn't like the none of that. Nothing about the Tyson Fury uh, fight got me interested. It was a turn off from the very beginning. It looked like two guys who was in love with each other broke up, <laughs> decided to fight each other, and when they got to the weigh-in, they had a change of heart. You know, when they looked in each other's eyes, it seemed like they had a change of heart, and he picked him up. I've never seen anything like that. And then the, the kissing on top of that, his name is Tyson Lip Gloss Fairy. <laughs> I'm, ne- I'm like, are you serious? Like, that's crazy to me. I was like, I, I actually like Tyson Fury. But that right there was just like, is he really back? Like, I don't know, man. I just don't trust. He's good for the heavyweight division. I just don't trust that, man. I, don't, I just didn't know. And then you fight the guy, five, he's 5'11". Five and he was happy to jump in his arms, man. That messes me up. I said, was he smiling? He was. Oh, my God. He was. It, 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 was it was sad, oh, man. Oh, my goodness. He just took man. his manhood right there. <laughs> he did. He just took his manhood. It's I lost just, all respect for that guy right there. I feel you. I feel you, man. I just don't understand that. The Charlo. Charlo and, uh, and Trout. I think Trout, man, they – I like Trout, man. It's, it's time for him to, to give it up. I do like Trout. To me, Trout is like going through this gauntlet like Chris Algieri. I mean, am I wrong here? Chris Algieri was going through the gauntlet, man, with Air, uh, American, uh, Earl Spence, Manny Pacquiao. I'm like, dang, get a man a break. Trout is going through. I think he don't need no more title shots, man. He, if he still want to fight, cool, but get him some, some tune-ups or something. But I don't. I don't want to see him in another title fight right now. I, I'm, I'm trout out right now. Trout is <laughs> trout is out. A rap with trout right now. I'm <laughs> trout out. I'm yeah. trout out, man. Uh, with, with remember, trout. remember that movie? Uh, trout needs to be uh, fried. That's the only way I'll, I'll take trout. Okay. Remember that movie, An Officer and a Gentleman, right, at, right, at the right. end, when he picked her up and held her and walked yeah, her, and walked her. That's what that Tyson Fury thing reminded me of. You say Officer and a Gentleman. Yeah, remember the officer and a gentleman when Richard Gere picked up Deborah Winger and oh, yeah, 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 walked yeah. walk, walk her out of there? Movie, yep. That reminded me of Tyson Fury and Safari. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Richard, Richard Gere and Deborah Winger. There you remember go. Remember that song, Robbie, at the end? Mm. Don't look where, up where we belong. <laughs> That's where the right. Where yep. Oh, man. So what's up? Uh, what I was about to say, uh, uh, well, that's about it, man. I, that's all I got to say, man. I'm okay. About to continue listening to the show. Put my earphones back on. There you go. All right, man. Thank uh, you for calling. I we love the call. Title Town, baby. That's where the best calls come from. Title Town. We Title Town no more. We ain't talking about any title town no more, son. We got to fly. The Indians are in first place, Daddy. Tell me it's not Title Town. Title Town. I'm not worried about Cleveland. I'm not worried about LeBron James right now. He's still the best player in the league. It doesn't matter. That's right. He had his broken hand. He had a broken, broken hand. hand. He got a, it wasn't his fault. He had a broken hand. Area code eight zero four. You're live. Hey Corey. Hey, what's going on, you guys? What's going on, Corey? Boxing <laughs> back with another banger. Oh no! Oh, my God. 
Yeah, man. Wow, it's a pretty good That's fight, good. man. Um, hey, man, it was you know I thought it was with Jeff Horn and Terrence Crawford, and it was not that competitive, man. Um, you know I feel like it was a one-sided matchup. Um, you know I feel like Terrence Crawford definitely solidified himself as the pound for pound number one fighter in the world. Um, you know, and I'm not being biased, you know what I mean? Um, you know, my favorite welterweight is uh, Danny Garcia, um, which he does have an amateur win over Terrence Crawford, for the record. They're yeah. one and one in the amateur. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, with that being said, man, um, you know, I, I, I truly think Terrence Crawford's going to make his staple in the, uh, you know, in the welterweight division. Um, Al Heyman still has the best welterweight because he has three as opposed to you know, as opposed to one, or he really has four, you know, elite welterweights, you know, that being Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, and Earl Spence. Um, you know, and with that being said, man, I would love to see, you know, who who reigns supreme um, in the welterweight division, um, you know, through the PBC. You know, you got uh, Earl Spence fighting Ocampos coming up this weekend. I got Earl Spence winning by knockout in the fifth round. Um, and then you have, um, you know, Sean Porter and uh, Danny Garcia, which should be announced um, sometime very, very soon. If not, um, you know, sometime within the next, uh, you know, week or two, um, you know, because I have the fight being in, um, you know, late August, early September is, is what I'm hearing so far for that fight to go down. Um, with that being said, you know, Terrence Crawford, it was a one-sided decision. Um, you know, and like I said, uh, you know, um, Jeff Horn had no visible jab. I think that really messed him up, you know, going in head first. I think his trainer should be fired immediately. Okay. Um, you know, effective yesterday, he should be fired. You can't bring a champion into a fight with no jab. What type of shit is that, man? That's awful. You know, but with that being said, um, you know, Bigger and better things on the horizon for uh, Terrence Crawford. Now Jeff Horn can go his own way with no belt and no promoter as of right now. He's not signed to top rank anymore. They pretty much used and abused him um, and pretty much got back the belt that he won for Manny Pacquiao before his contract ended. So it was a win-win for top rank, in my opinion. You know, with that being said, uh, my personal opinion is I think Terrence Crawford is going to fight you know, probably, uh, you know, Jose Benavidez, um, David Benavidez's brother, uh, probably fight him next. I think that will be a pretty good fight. A lot of people thought Herrera beat Jose Benavidez. Um, that was a very, very close fight as well. Um, you know, with that being said, um, you know, had some other fights on tap as well, Charlo versus Trout. Um, you know, that was a great fight as well. Um, you know, I pretty much think I had it scored 8-4 for Charlo, one of the, one of the judges. Had it a uh, a draw, um, that was an Adderley Bird um ish decision. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was pretty much get, uh, Jamel Charlo gave the look on his face of disgust when they read out that score, man, of, of a draw. Um, you know, and it was just like, what? He gave the Mayweather face when uh, Mayweather fought Canelo. <laughs> you know, but you know, like I said, it, it's stuff like that. It, it ruins the sport of boxing. You know, it's not good for boxing at all. I think that judge should definitely be reprimanded for that. That was way, way, way. I mean, I don't even know how you could score that um, fight a draw, you know, after the knockdowns and, you right. know, Trout being visibly hurt in the later rounds as well. Um, you know, but with that being said, you know, I want to see Charlo, Jamal, Jamel Charlo versus Jared Hurd. Um, if I were to have to pick right now, you know, if you pretty much, you know, um, you know, force me to pick right now between Jamel Charlo and uh, and um, Jared Hurd, I'm going to have to go with Jared Hurd right now, man, for all intents and purposes. I think Jared Hurd is, uh, you know, find a way to win. Um, you know, a lot of people say all he, ha all he does is come forward, get hit, and throw those punches. But let's be honest, man. He's got a hell of a resume, man. And he's still undefeated as well. You know, and like, let's be honest. He was not the A side for some of those fights that he has been in. You know, he has been picked to lose. He has been picked to lose similar to Danny Garcia, you know, in his, you know, coming up through the ranks, man. I mean, let's be honest, man. 
You know, he was not the best amateur standout. I mean, everybody wasn't, you know, lining up to sign him like they did Earl Spence when he went to the Olympics and got robbed. You know, my personal opinion is I think Jared Hurd earned everything he had. And I think he has one more, um, you know, he has one more thing to prove at 154 before he moves up to 160. I think that's to, that's to destroy Jamel Charlo. Um, I think that he could possibly get that job done, man. Um, but like I said, that's just my opinion as of right now. I would love to see how that fight goes out and plays out. You know, but, um, but yeah, man, with that being said, man, um, you know, like I said, I didn't get to watch the uh, Friday night fights that they had on it. ESPN three. Corey, what did you um, think of Tyson you know, Fury? I heard they were some... Oh, the Tyson Fury. There's only one Tyson Fury. I'm gonna go ahead and back off Tyson Fury for a little while, man. I'm gonna let him cool down, man. He's on another level right now, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't condone him. I don't condone that, you know that that type of that type of stuff he was doing, um, you know. But he was trying to sell the fight, and you know, like I said, man. Um, what did you think of the actual fight there. itself? I was live on the air for four hours and I had some brothers, you know, on the show with me and they were like, so how do you feel about Tyson Fury now, Corey? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I, I ain't got nothing to say, man. Not, nothing to say. I was on mute, to be honest with you, man, because wow. I was backing, you know, Tyson Fury so much. You know, I thought he to be honest with you, I'm going to break it down to you. I'm going to break it down to everybody on the panel like this and everybody at home watching right now. When you think about what Tyson Fury has been through, you know, being, being out of the ring for two and a half years, being out of the ring for two years straight, not even thinking about the ring, doing everything that you could possibly do to screw up your body, he's probably done. Um, with that being said, you know, with only a five-month camp, you know, and five months of training, he lost over a hundred pounds. Um, you know, and he and he and he did get back into the ring against a guy that was, you know, twenty-three and one with twenty-one knockouts. Um, his only loss coming to a world champion fighter, currently Emmanuel Char. Um, what did you really, really, truly, as a boxing aficionado, expect from Tyson Fury? Being out of the ring for that long, mm -hmm. physically. I mean, because to be to be honest and to be completely honest with you, I didn't expect a whole hell of a lot from him, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I really, truly didn't. And I mean, I think that what he did was he, you know, the guy, you know, danced around the ring for four rounds and finally just said, you know what? I can't hit him. I had to jump up to hit him the first couple times I did hit him. I mean, shit, I'm going to get knocked out in the next round. I'm throwing in the towel now. I can't continue. That's what happened. You know, a lot of my viewers wanted to say, well, Tyson Fury should at least got the knockout. I'm like, you can't get a knockout when the guy throws in the towel quick. Right. It's impossible. You'll never get one like that. You I know what I expected from Tyson Fury? Competition. You know, what I, you know what I expected from Tyson Fury? I expected him to come back with another banger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That's my call, y'all. Y'all have a great night, man. All, All right. right. And you can catch hey, Corey on Corey Lee Boxing on YouTube. Uh, so there you go. And he's got a good show out there. So you guys go check him out. Um, real quickly, because we're approaching the 830 uh, half hour here. Uh, news and rumors. Uh, we're going to go through these pretty quick. Did you, I, I just saw this on Twitter and I didn't hear about this. I'm not sure who, you know, but apparently last night, Mike Tyson threw a glass of water on Don King at the uh, International Boxing Hall of Fame induction weekend. Uh, he said that uh, apparently Don King approached him and Mike Tyson threw a glass of water on him. So I don't know. That's the first I'm hearing about it. So there it is, man. Mike Tyson. Okay. Gone Mike Tyson. Um. IBF strips Triple G of the title. The IBF has decided this week to strip Triple G for not fighting uh, Sergei Dervinchenko. I think this was a silly move for the IBF. They make a lot more money with Triple G on big fights than without him, but not to mention he's been fighting those mandatories for years. So why he didn't have enough uh, in the bank, I don't know. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya says that the Canelo Triple G fight is off, but... Uh, he stated that he, uh, De La Hoya said he's walking away from the fight, uh, the Triple G Canelo fight, and he sent offers out to Billy Joe Saunders and Dan Daniel Jacobs. 
This is interesting because Billy Joe Saunders took to social media to say it wasn't a real offer. Uh, De La Hoya stated that he'll never do a 50-50 fight with Canelo. Tom Loeffler has stated that the fight is not dead. He's working with Eric Gomez on making the fight happen. Uh, he's backed off his original stance of 50-50. Uh, if the fight doesn't get made, I'm looking for Canelo to fight Spike O'Sullivan. I don't see him fighting Daniel Jacobs. I really don't. Nope. No, I don't um, see it. I don't see it. I don't either. I don't either. If he fights anybody next, it'll be Spike O'Sullivan. So, Mikey Garcia versus Robert Easter is official for July 28th. Uh, the fight was announced on Showtime last night, and Katie Taylor's father was injured in the gym shooting uh, last week, I think it was, maybe a week before. Uh, he apparently, a uh, gunman came in there and uh, shot up, uh, shot a couple of people. He's going to be okay. He was injured, but he's, he's going to be all right. So the injuries are not life-threatening, and the other man was uh, hitting the leg. So uh, unfortunate. Not sure what was going on there. But uh, real quick, though, what do you think uh, if De La Hoya does – well, I would rather see a Canelo-Jacobs fight than I would a Canelo-Triple-G rematch because we've already saw that fight. Again, it's, uh, you know, what are we going to do? But, Beeb, who do you favor in that fight? Jacobs. I, I oh, like Jacobs too. Daniel Jacobs. Like Jacobs. Like Jacobs. That's a dangerous fight for him. Yeah, that's a dangerous fight for him, man. That's a good fight. Uh, that would be perfect. That would be a perfect solution because Canelo could get taught a lesson. You use PEDs. This is what happens to you. Oh. Daniel Jacobs, oh, tear you apart. I'll be honest with you. I I really thought Jacobs won that Triple G fight. I really oh, did. I scored it for Jacobs. Everybody on press row looked at me like I was that. nuts. When I told him I thought Jacobs, I was picking Jacobs to win the fight. They looked at me like I was crazy. And then everybody was like, man, how did you know that? You know, it was like, I thought, you know, a lot of people had Jacobs winning that fight also. Oh, yeah. Well, Eric, I've, I've, said, I've said all along that Daniel Jacobs deserves a rematch. Yeah, I don't even, you know, I, if he gets a rematch, great. If he doesn't, that's fine, too. I think I'd rather see him fight Canelo. He'd get a bigger payday off of Canelo, I, I would think. Um, well, but yeah. then he might get the notoriety he deserves, too. You know, so absolutely. There you go. All right, guys, it's 830 now. So the fights are on Fox Sports one. We're going to jump off here so you guys can get to it. That'll do it for this edition of Ringside Reporter. As always, you can catch Robert on Twitter at Ringside Robert or you can call Ringside Robbie's Corner at 917-259-1810. Leave him a message. Catch Joe Habib on Twitter at jhabib1 and find his YouTube channel at beatingtheoddswithbeeb.com. I'm at Ringside 73 and we will see you next week. All right.